everyone, as soon as Red Cross pops into their head, when I go to talk in front of a group, they always say, hurricane, or, mm -hmm. uh, oh, thanks for passing out water during the last disaster, or house fire, and we do do that. Mm -hmm. But we were founded to help the military. Jeremy Gentile believes in paying it forward. As a Marine and soldier, his unit was one of the first to invade Afghanistan. That's when he had his first contact with the Red Cross. We're in the middle of the desert. No one knew where, where I was. I could not believe that the Red Cross was able to find me. Um, it just goes to show what, what we can do in the Red Cross. Now he's the one delivering emergency messages to military members embedded deep in enemy territory when even the government can't find them. I got a call from uh, a service member's wife. He was in Afghanistan. They're about to have their first child. And she wanted to know if there was any way that her husband could come home. Through Skype, he was able to see his son being born. Through the American Red Cross, through Skype, he was able to see his son coming in, into this world. And that just touched my heart. The birth stories are the best. Jeremy often comes into the lives of service members and their families during highs and extreme lows. Every day, a veteran comes into his office needing help. He had just gotten out of the military, and he was waiting for his VA benefits to kick in. He came down here, sold everything he had in West Virginia to move down here. Um, with his, four, his family up. With his four little small children, all under the age of six, um, and his wife, uh, and they had her mother with them, who was elderly and sick. And he, all in this, all minivan, in this minivan, with all with all the stuff, and it was starting to rain, with all the stuff that they own on top. So the first thing I did was went and got a blue tarp that we have in the back for disasters, and I put it over their stuff so it wouldn't get wet. I referred them to United Way, 211, and they put them in contact with other agencies to get them that emergency food. Uh, we were able to provide uh, like maybe two weeks uh, of assistance. Right. He got a job within three weeks. His benefits kicked in within two months. Where he's at right now in life, he credits that to the American Red Cross, to the United Way. Jeremy is the first to tell you veterans are the last to ask for help. We had this motto when I was in the military. It's called take a knee and drink water. And that's something that's ingrained in you when you go to boot camp, when you go out into the fleet, when you're when you're on active duty, when you're in these war zones, that is ingrained in you. Make do with what you have. Don't complain. Suck it up and carry on. So it's hard for them to it, ask for help. It's extremely difficult. Families. And that's, that's something I'm trying to change in our community. Mm -hmm. I don't want them to come to me when their power is already turned off. Mm -hmm. I need a week or two weeks in order to process checks and make sure everything is cleared. I need them to come in before that. The week we caught up with him, he was helping a family in crisis about to be kicked out of their apartment. And he waited till the last minute. Uh, that was one of those. He had just gotten back from Afghanistan. He did not want to show defeat. He tried everything. He, they were selling, they, they sold everything they owned first. He literally did not have a couch to sleep on, a couch to sit on. These are the war stories we don't hear when heroes come home and end up homeless. Thanks to United Way, I'm able to do support groups. I'm able, able to go out in the community and do outreach. I'm able to provide those VA benefits, uh, help veterans out. You have to go out and find them most, most of the time. And it goes back to their military history tradition of make do with what you have, take a knee and drink water. When, there was, when you had a bad day or something was going on, you take a knee and drink water. That's why United Way is such a great partner because they're, they have this two-in-one system and it's tied into all the community resources that are out there. I don't have all those contacts. I know I have a lot of contacts, but they're much, they have a bigger, broader base and they have that individual, they know who to call for whatever they need. We're gonna find them service uh, one way or the other is, is what it comes down to. They're just such a blessing to us. For the first time in almost three decades, the Special Equestrians now has a permanent home at this farm in Buckingham. I really give United Way a lot of credit for us just being here because um, about 10 years ago when I was president of the board, um, United Way brought me into their office and sat me down and said, where are you all going? What are, what, where are your plans for the future? And I was new then and I didn't really even know what to tell them. And they encouraged us to buy our own facility, get our own property. And they also gave us um, the funds to um, do strategic planning so that that would become a real possibility for us. And within a few years, it really did happen. So I really give them a lot of the credit for us just being in our own place and having a solid future.
Jan Pfeiffer depends on the United Way for funds to pay her staff and provide scholarships to her riders. Some come and they've never spoken a word and their first word is the name of their horse. Um, some children come and they can't even sit up on a horse and they learn to sit up on a horse. Um, some have very poor balance and through riding the horse they, you know, they get better balance, better muscle tone. Six-year-old Allie is one of those students. She's determined to get out of her wheelchair and walk someday. And her horse Petey is going to help her do it. One, two, three, go! Up. Her dad is proud of his little girl who works tirelessly to build up her core muscles in hopes of one day taking those first steps. She's very strong-willed and she's very determined to walk. Allie was born with spina bifida. In the three years since she's been coming here, the changes are tremendous. She gets a great enjoyment out of it. She's, her confidence level has increased. She's not as shy as she used to be. It's, it's really opened her up. Jen knows without the support of the United Way, she could not make miracles happen. As they do daily here, Allie is proof. We just don't know where we'd be without them.